Welcome back to the Anxiety Slayer podcast. As May is Mental Health Awareness Month, we're talking about understanding mental health and where you can find support. Many of this month's episodes are in response to questions about mental health from our private Facebook group and email. And here's our second question for the month. How can you summon up the motivation to help yourself or practice self-care when you're so low or anxious that you just don't feel like doing anything? What are the first steps that you can take to talk yourself into doing them? And this question addresses a big challenge with anxiety and the exhaustion and loss of hope or motivation that comes with it. And I know that you've felt that way before, and I know that I have too, and I'm grateful for the question and that we can discuss it today. Yeah, another really important question, I think, to explore because it's so difficult when we feel exhausted by anxiety and only we can do it and it's really challenging when we have to somehow take that first step and we feel so anxious and so tired so I think the first thing that really helps is trying to gain some clarity and sit down quietly perhaps with a pen and a piece of paper and ask yourself what exactly is causing the lack of motivation because it's not the same for everyone And I found that getting clear on what's going on really helps with the next steps to take. And some of those questions might be, am I feeling this way because I'm exhausted? Is this pure exhaustion from anxiety? Or is it that you don't believe anything will help no matter what? As as we often hear listeners who have just started working with and working through anxiety is they often don't feel like anything works or they won't stick with something because they want it to work immediately. And it takes practice. The other part is maybe you just don't know where to start. Like our listener here, just where do I get started? How do I begin working through this? And of course it may be something else, but this is where journaling to clear your mind comes in or talking with a trusted friend to express how you're feeling and to get some feedback. Sometimes close friends are the very best mirrors for us that uh, when when we can be in that place of of trust and surrender and conversation, we could, oh, you know, maybe, maybe I could change this up or add something more supportive to my daily practice. Yeah. And just to have that initial clearing of the waves, like, okay, I feel really exhausted. It is just pure exhaustion. So how can I support myself in in finding some rest? How can I respond to that? Sometimes we feel completely overwhelmed. Our mind just feels overwhelmed. And that's when the bark flower remedy elm can be really helpful. Get some elm and take it in a glass of water a few times a day just to support the mind in finding confidence and clarity to take a step forward. So just clearing the way Getting some idea, as we've already said, it's not the same for everyone. So becoming more personal and more specific. How is it impacting you? Voicing it on a piece of paper or better still out loud with a friend. And sometimes just having it said what it is really helps clear the way for some inspiration and some motivation. It's also a good idea to investigate go deeper into your work habits and whatever it is that you do for a living. Are you burned out? Are you stressed at work? Are those factors also weighing in? Because many of us give and give and give and give, even when we're depleted. And then about with anxiety comes forward and it just takes you out at the knees. It really does. It really does. I was reading a passage from Brené Brown this morning where she was saying we really need to look at, you know, our sugar intake, our caffeine intake, the long work weeks, look at how many hours we're working and how maintainable that is for our bodies and our nervous system. And she listed other habits to look at too. And sometimes it starts there with 
not so much what can I do that's new, uh, which can feel hard to add new things in when we're already tired and overwhelmed, but what can I stop that's coming in on me? Yes, what can I release? What can I let go of? Yeah, and even practically, you know, do I need to look at my caffeine intake? Am I eating too many carbs? Is my blood sugar all over the place? Is there something I can review? Is there something that's feeding anxiety? So even to start there with just pruning back on things that are putting us under duress, getting some early nights, um, they're just simple things like that, just creating space. It's a process and it takes time, but just clearing the way to start taking some small steps. Small steps still count. They're very, very valid and other steps can follow that will help us. So clearing some space. And to remember that there are so many resources for inspiration. Whether you start a thread in our Facebook group asking members to team up with you and share what helps them, or do some research to find uplifting books to read or listen to, or perhaps getting yourself in touch with a therapist and having a conversation about where you're at and where you might be able to go from here if you, if you need professional support. Sometimes we do. Yeah, we can't always do it on our own. Sometimes we need help and it's good to know when we need it and it's certainly good to get it when we need it. And again, that's another thing that we can really get specific with. What kind of help do I need? And if we feel that we don't want to talk, consider body work. Consider going for a massage. Body work is one of the most important parts of my self-care and has been for years, over 20 years. It's something that I do every month and I cannot express how important it is to have body work. Shiatsu is also wonderful. Acupuncture is wonderful. Whatever it is that, that you're attracted to, our bodies need that. We need to move the energy through our bodies because it's so easy to get stagnant and stuck, have the energy stuck. And so, yeah, I love that you bring that up, that it's not just talking and being witness. Sometimes it's laying on a table. Taking the help and doing some release work. Yeah. Or having the release happen for you and just being open to it. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite Ayurveda teachers that I often quote, Dr. Vasant Lad, says the issues in our tissues. My body loves acupuncture. Other bodies might not. Anxiety sufferers often don't like needles. So just think, what for you? Could you just go for a really soothing aromatherapy massage? Right. And then coming back to the, the question from our, from our listener, how to summon the motivation to help yourself. It can be as simple as just booking a massage. Um, booking a reflexology session, whatever appeals to you, just book in for something, maybe just half an hour and have that experience and see what that clears for you and how that feels for you. It's such a gift. It really is. Give yourself the gift of, of doing that, of exploring that, whether it be a massage, whether it be shiatsu, acupuncture, reflexology, Pick, pick one. <laughs> pick the one that calls to you and, and give it a try if you can. Yeah, and try a few. If that doesn't, if you go for a session and you think, okay, that was nice, but it didn't do a lot for me, try something else. Mm. Be curious and just see what your body responds to. After the quick break, we'll talk about the steps that you can take to feel better when you don't have any motivation, as well as some additional information that will help you. If you're feeling stuck and unmotivated and you just need to get moving. The Anxiety Slayer podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and so much more. I remember at the end of my corporate career, I had many days where I was struggling to get out of bed to go to work. I was so out of sorts. I just didn't want to go anymore. And while we often associate burnout with work, that's not the only cause. BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Put yourself at the front of the line. If you're not feeling like yourself, 
and this is all resonating with you a bit too much, please consider seeking out support from a therapist at BetterHelp. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing the stress in your life. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Anxiety Slayer listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash slayer. That's betterhelp.com slash slayer. Before the break, we were talking about gathering support and inspiration and being available to try new modalities like massage. Now let's talk about some of the small steps that we can take when we're feeling low and not very motivated to do anything. Yeah, the hardest thing is starting, isn't it? I think we've all had spells like this where we just don't feel we can start or our mind doesn't want to start. We have some objection or we're just too tired. We just don't know what to do because we're so overburdened. And that's not easy. Um, I think really anything that can inspire motivation is what we're looking for in that situation. Start with something small, like doing some stretches in the morning or some morning pages, writing to clear your mind. Follow a guided tapping session. We have many on our Patreon. Just click play and tap along with us. And we've been having some really good feedback just this week from people who are using tapping. Uh, Take a short walk, get yourself moving, and note how you feel afterwards so that you're aware of the, the benefits for you. And sometimes we just need to do something like get a piece of paper or a calendar page and put a cross each day that we've done something so we're not breaking the chain. Just see what your motivation style is. Sometimes when I hit a rut, I'll use a habit app on my phone and just pick a couple of things. It's easy to be overly generative and have a whole list. Oh, I'll try this, I'll try this. And then we're just going to feel overwhelmed or like we've let ourselves down because we haven't done everything. So I recommend picking one or two things and have your phone ping you in the morning with an app and uh, tick them off when you're done them. But little things, really attainable, small steps. That's something that my daughter and I have been doing together. She's been asking for some help with motivation. And we've decided that each day that she will choose one self-care task, I'll just call it a task for lack of better language, and one task that can help her move forward in her schooling. That might be, you know, reaching out to learn more about financial aid or making sure that she's signed up for any classes that she needs or, or what have you, to know that it's just two things so that it doesn't feel like so much. And then having the accountability with me to say, hey, mom, I did X and Y today. In some days, it's, I took a shower. And some days are like that. When we celebrate being able to get our butts in the shower, or when we celebrate (laughs) the fact that we actually had an extra glass of water, or whatever it is, that we're doing that says, okay, I know how to care for myself. And even if I can only do this one thing today, I'm going to celebrate that. And I'm going to be okay with that because that's today. Tomorrow I might be able to do two or three. Yeah. And no comparison other than me today with me yesterday. No comparison with anyone else. No shooting all over ourselves. Yeah. I can remember um, a few periods in my life where I've been struggling with chronic health and chronic pain. I'd go back to this basic intention and it would pull me up every time. And it would be every morning before breakfast, I need to shower and meditate. Just that, 20 minutes meditating, take a shower, have a healthy breakfast. And the way that would carry me through the day, the difference that made was incredible. And I would really feel that within three or four days. I would really feel the benefit of that. And I've come back to that basic, okay, my body's struggling. I'm in pain. Let's just get back to that again. 
Ironically, a hot shower is one of the best things I've ever experienced for chronic pain, but when you're really stiff and struggling, it can be hard, hard to get in there and do it. So just pick something basic that you know you're going to be really glad come evening time that you did that. And uh, again, you know, five minutes journaling at the end of the day, today I did this and I'm pleased I did it. Cement the steps in and then we can build on them and we can add to them. One of the main challenges with anxiety is it feels so huge that we think we need to do huge things to overcome it, and we don't. We need to do small things regularly, little things every day, and it will take effect. The other thing I like to do is look out for others who've taken action with self-care during challenging times and see what strength and inspiration I can draw from them. And that might appeal to you as well. If there's an author who inspires you, perhaps a TED Talk, a podcast, uh, whatever it might be, look around for stories that, that lift you up, that give you hope, and that help with motivation. Because sometimes it's just that, that one post, that one article, that one TED Talk that will change everything. Mm. If we can find somebody that we respect, somebody that's been through something significant, somebody I really have benefited from reading is Vidyamala Birch, who writes a lot about mindfulness um, practices with chronic pain and illness. She's been teaching for years and is an excellent example of somebody who really knows how to live joyfully through adversity. I have a look around for inspiring stories. Yeah, people that can share their experience with you and you might just get get a hand up and get some hope from their experience. One of my favorite authors over the years has been Gay Hendricks, and he wrote The Big Leap. And uh, that book for me was really helpful in business and from a personal stance in wanting to expand my influence, expand and be a more full expression of myself. And I've read that book twice now, once reading it and once listening to it. And I have a a note that's in my office that's been here for a long time that I pulled from that. So this is an example of something that really stays with you. And it's every day I expand my abundance, love, and success, and I inspire the people around me to do the same. Again, it's, it's different than somebody who's suffering and has been through hell and back and can now tell their story but it's in a in its own way helpful for you to know that there are things that you can do to expand your abundance love and success with yourself with others because if you're listening to this podcast you are not only a person who suffers from anxiety you are so much more than that Yeah, that's a really important point, not to be defined by anxiety. And again, when we're looking for motivation, what's the part of us that we can speak to that isn't defined by anxiety? Sometimes we need to unearth that part of us, the part of us that's shown courage in adversity, the part of us that's shown kindness, the part of us that's always available to show love and support to people we care about. Spend time with those areas of us as well. And don't let anxiety be like an oil slick and leech all over us. Try and regain ground. Regaining ground from anxiety can, can really help. Um, I also like to gather some quotes and notes that I have around me. I'm looking on my desk at the moment. I've got one here from a tea tag. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I drink yogi teas a lot, and sometimes they make, the tags make me roll my eyes a bit. I'm like, well, I don't understand. Maybe it's too early for me. I don't understand that one. But this one, I understand. Let's get a hold of it. It says, how can you uplift this moment happening right now? And I think that's a really handy one to have around for anxiety. You know, in this moment, I'm suffering. How bad does it have to get before I seek relief? Mm. What can I do to uplift it? Sometimes it's as simple as starting to pace up and down and tap on the collarbone point on the EFT tapping sequence. Pace and tap and breathe. This is too much anxiety in my body. I need some calm. I need some peace. Just pace and tap and breathe maybe some chamomile tea, call a friend, take some rescue remedy, 
follow a guided practice for a few minutes. How can I uplift this moment that's happening right now? How can I make this easier? And we can. The mind will tell us we can't, but we can. We just have to find that little nugget of strength within us to take action. And part of taking action is finding a way to move your body every day. It's made all the difference in my life. I used to be very athletic and move a lot. And then there was a period of time where I didn't move so much. And interestingly enough, that time is when I felt most stressed and most anxious because I wasn't moving the energy through my body. And that one massage a month wasn't enough. Join a walking group if you can. Reach out to a neighbor that offers encouragement to move. Maybe you can take a walk in the mornings or after work. There's so many creative ways to move. And in my experience, when you have a partner, my husband and I both walk. We either walk together or we cheer each other on when one walks the treadmill in the morning and the other at the end of the day or whatever that looks like because we're making that investment We're moving and we are in better moods. Our bodies feel better. Uh, One of the nice side effects is dropping a little bit of extra weight because we're moving. But just an overall sense of feeling like I'm giving myself this gift and I'm giving my sweet body this gift to move instead of to freeze. Mm. Yeah, and freezing really is an anxiety response. That's what holds us captive in in non-action, so a really good one to break. Yeah, so maybe a Fitbit or a you know step counter. I know many members now, private Facebook group, don't like something reading their heart rate. That can be a trigger, so maybe find a simple one that doesn't bring those statistics to you, but something that motivates you to walk. I find counting steps helpful. That motivates me. I like to... Uh, Tick the steps off. No, I've done it. Mm -hmm. I've shared this before, but not for a while. So I'll share again. I have a good friend who suffers with very high anxiety if she doesn't walk. If she walks every day, she's anxiety free. When she stops walking, the anxiety comes back. So again, simple. It's such a simple thing. Try and commit to moving. And if you want to share and start a thread in our private Facebook group where we can all encourage each other to walk and how many steps you're doing, what did you see on your walk? Share some photos, share how you're feeling. Let's do that. Let's help each other. Oh, that sounds like fun. Maybe we ought to start that thread. Let's do it. And if you aren't a part of our private Facebook group, if you log into Facebook and search for Anxiety Slayer, you'll see our page and our group. And we invite you to answer a couple of questions and then you will be added to the group and can be a part of the thread that we're talking about, as well as many other offerings and conversations that you might find supportive. Yeah, we've got some wonderful, kind members, so it's another good place to find support and motivation. And finally, a really simple thing. When we feel tired and overwhelmed with anxiety and we don't know where to begin, it can be really helpful to make yourself an anxiety slayer care kit. And just have that to hand so those things are there when you're struggling. And some items we recommend, including our rescue remedy, nighttime spray, or they do a really nice little tin of pastels if you don't want the spray. So you can just keep those with you. When you feel anxious, just take some rescue remedy. Keep a a calming selection of teas by your kettle so they're ready to hand. So, you know, if you walk in the kitchen and you just feel Beside yourself, it's there. Um, Some good teas are lemon balm, chamomile, peppermint and fennel. Pucker Herbs Love Tea is really good if you're feeling particularly anxious and they also have a relaxed blend that's very calming too. I like their nighttime blend as well and Mm. they have a wonderful chamomile that I can't remember. Three chamomile? No, it's another one. Chamomile and manuka honey? Yes. It is so tasty. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, of course, we always recommend that that you read or listen to something uplifting. Today's task, we invite you to 
put together your Anxiety Slayer Care Kit. What do you already have on hand? And then make a list of what you need. Create this kit. This is something I do for my driving experiences. If I have a a visit, if I'm driving down to visit my daughter, it's about two and a half hours. And I have all of the things that I need. I always travel with a flask of tea and I always have spring water with me. And I make sure that I leave tea at her place as well. And I have books and classes to listen to on my journey. And then Rescue Remedy comes with me everywhere I go. It's just in my purse. And there's something about taking care of myself in that way. None of it takes a lot of time. It's such a sweet way to travel. So if you suffer with driving anxiety, make an Anxiety Slayer Care Kit for your car. Have one at home. Have one for your car and add to it. And you'll really notice a change. Yeah. I keep a little backpack with me when I'm out and about because I always have to carry three books and some pens. <laughs> but there's a little pocket on the front and it's my self-care pocket and it has earplugs. Oh, good addition. Yes. You know, if I'm somewhere where I don't want to hear noise, which is often. So I have uh, some earplugs in there, some headphones, uh, lavender oil, rescue remedy. Um, I think there's a little piece of rose quartz in there. It's just a little pocket that's got some, some care items in it. And also by my chair, I have some items where I sit and read. And on the difficult days, we can just reach out and there's the lavender oil. Awesome. I have a nice uh, roll on also, which is lavender and chamomile oil. You just roll on your wrists and temples. So have some bits around in different places where in those difficult moments, you can just take some rescue remedy, make yourself a cup of calming tea. This morning I went outside and picked some fresh lemon balm. I made some lemon balm tea and it was so good. Mm. That spring green, it's the first time I've done it this year. Have a little pot of herbs, perhaps on your windowsill, perhaps outside the door. Um, they're my friends. The, the healing, calming herbs are my friends, and I go visit them, and it's just such a simple thing. <laughs> I love you. Pick <laughs> <laughs> some leaves and brew some tea. <laughs> <laughs> and then imagine yourself having tea with a nanga, because who would you rather have a cup of tea with than a nanga? <laughs> than a mad English woman. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm so glad we came together today to have this conversation. And, and thank you to our listeners, who, all of you who continue to reach out, who post your questions, send us emails. It really helps us to know where you're at and how we can support you, how we can show up and talk about these things during Mental Health Awareness Month and, and after that, of course. And just so you know, we are having a special sale a mental health awareness sale where you can get 25% off all of our courses with the coupon code mental health. And you can do that at anxietyslayer.teachable.com. Thanks for listening.